Good morning. Let's go to prayer. Dear Heavenly Father, we pray for Pastor Sister and and the children, Lord. We we pray that you would wrap your love and strength around them, that that they would know that they're being comforted by you, Lord, that to get into the next phase of of, uh, of of this tragedy that that's happened to them, Lord, and so that, uh, we we pray, Lord, that you would uh, guide the whole family on on how how to handle the situation, Lord. And, um, we pray, Lord, for those who who aren't here today that are um, off and about, or that are maybe too down to come, Lord, or feeling hopeless. We pray, Lord, for those people that you also might um, have them feel that your strength and uh, guidance and to help them uh, seek for help if, if, if they need help. Lord, we pray for homeless people during these winter months, Lord, and the, the cold nights. We, we pray, Lord, that you would give them shelter and, and clothes, dear Lord. We pray for those who used to come here, Lord, that are either at other churches or have temporarily turned away, Lord, we ask that, that you would seek them and, and, and speak to them, Lord, and bring them back, whether it be here or, or another church, Lord. We, we pray that uh, their relationship would, would be uh, re, uh, reborn again with you. We pray all these prayers in your son's name. Amen. I once was lost, but now I'm found. I once was lost, but now I'm found. So far away, but I'm home now. I once was lost, but now I'm found. And now my life song sings. I once was blind, but now I see. I once was blind, but now I see. I don't know how, but when he touched me, I once was blind, but now I see. And now my life song sings. was dead, but now I live. Now my life to you I give. Oh Lord, my life to you I give. Now my life to you I give. Hallelujah, my life song sing to you. Alleluia, alleluia. Let my life song sing to you. Alleluia, alleluia. Let my life song sing to you.
your presence among us, Lord, as we worship you, Lord, in spirit and truth. God, as we were singing that song of when our names are called upon, we will be ready. Whenever that may be, when our work on, our, on this earth is completed, Lord, we will be with you to do the service that you have for us as we uh, spend time with you in eternity. We thank you, Lord. Now you speak to us through your word. In Jesus' name I pray, amen. Before you sit down, turn to somebody and uh, wave at them and tell them how much you are happy to have them here. Hallelujah. Good to see all of you. All right, how is out there? Yep. Yes. <laughs> well, I'd like to call upon uh, Selena to uh, read for us from the passage that we go, we're going to look at uh, today. So please uh, turn your Bibles to 1 Corinthians. If I speak in the tongue, tongues of men or of angels, but do not have love, I am only a resounding gong or a clanging cymbal. If I have the gift of prophecy and can fathom all mysteries and all knowledge, and if I have a faith that can move mountains, but do not have love, I am nothing. If I give all I possess to the poor, and give over my body to hardship that I may boast, but do not have love, I gain nothing. Love is patient, love is kind. It does not envy, it does not boast, it is not proud. Okay, Kevin, yep, okay, good. How is everyone doing? Good, good to see all of you. Just trying to, hi Christy, how are you? <laughs> Last Thursday, um, th this past Thursday, I was at uh, Panera's. Um, I do that, you know, just to get a, a different, um, uh, ambience of uh, when I'm preparing my sermon because most of the times I'm 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 in the office. Uh, I my office gets flooded with so many people coming and visiting every day, uh, so I need to get away from people. So I go to Paneras uh, to study there, and uh, I was uh, preparing my sermon. And three um, elderly gentlemen every 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 week when I'm there they come there. They sit around and play some games, and they seem to have a great laughter all the time. It's been almost uh, uh, a few months I've been noticing them, but I have not made the connection with them. So this time, after everything is over, I went up to them and I said, uh, uh, you guys might be having a great time. And they said, not me. One person said, not me, but he is having, because he won, I lost. I said, well, you know, someone has to win and lose, right? And I said, my name is Francis, and the other person said, oh, my name is Francis too. And the other two got surprised. We never knew that you are Francis. <laughs> They've been friends for a long, yeah, I never bring my name up, you know, Francis. And then we had a little chat. And after that, uh, they said to me uh, uh, how uh, important it is for them to have that connection. They come, have good time, and play games. So I cannot overemphasize the need for connection, even more so during this pandemic. You know, please, please, for your sake, for, for the sake of others, come to church when you can. This is where you'll be connected. So I so appreciate Tom for trying to facilitate men to come together. Uh, it, it could be so, doing something else, or I could have walked out of that moment uh, uh, why bother move off? But when I was having conversation with him, there's another person was listening to me, and then he said to me, 
Uh, oh, well, uh, uh, when I said Francis, he said, yeah, that is a great name. My, name. my name is also Francis, but his last name is Francis. He's from Texas. And then he came over there, and he's a pastor there in Texas, and they were saying, Texas, we have lots of big churches, so how about here? And then I said, well, you know, we have churches too here. So I've invited him to join us. Probably he will join us live stream. So, but thank you, Tom. Uh, it's very kind of you to think of, you know, how we could have this set of people. Amen. Now, does this world need kindness? Yeah, if it is yes, uh, lift your hands. If it is no, don't lift your hands. But if you don't care anything, say whatever. Especially when we were walking the other day, not the other day, my, my wife corrects me about my, I have this problem with time and space. Just yesterday, we went for a walk in the afternoon in the scenic route. Uh, we took uh, Massapog Ave around that area. We were walking and uh, walking facing the, direct, uh, the traffic because we want to avoid. Uh, um, uh, she, my wife, wife was behind me. And one car, red car, coming from this way, you know, he was going on the right direction, right? I don't know what happened. He swerved into or he cut right into my lane and then he went over, almost hitting me. And my wife looked and said, that's very rude. <laughs> huh? It's more than very rude, very dangerous, right, for you to, you know, just to cut over somebody. But that's the world we are living. Why? It's yeah, that's why I said, Lord, Lord, you know, impatience. I think impatience, people are, at times, can be, I don't want to fill the gap afterwards. But in 1982, uh, Berkeley writer and activist uh, Anna Herbert coined a simple phrase, random acts of kindness, R-A-O-K. Have you heard of that? I tell you, that idea took root and then took off. Well, we all agree that the world needs kind people, right? But then we step back and we wait for someone else to come alongside and be kind to us. Instead, how about if we become the trendsetters of kindness? Don't wait for someone else to be kind to you. But you set the trend by being kind. Well, oftentimes I've noticed uh, uh, the broken people and the hurting people are uh, often, they, they are the ones they would reach out to others to be kind. Because when they received kindness and they then see what it is, they would reach out and to be kind to others. And one of them was Princess Diana. You heard of Princess Diana, right? Uh, she was going through a lot of depression, uh, struggling with bulimia uh, and uh, hurting marriage. Finally ended up in a divorce. You know that, right? But she personified kindness around the world by getting involved in kind uh, acts. Many such kind acts around the world. So here is her endorsement of the Random Acts of Kindness organization. Perhaps we are too embarrassed to change or too frightened of the consequences of showing that we actually care. But why not risk it anyway? Begin today. Carry out a random act of seemingly senseless kindness with no expectation of reward or punishment. Safe in the knowledge that one day, someone somewhere might do the same for you. It was our first vacation in the, in the USA. We were living in Quincy at the time. We were on our way to Berkshire to enjoy uh, uh, a peaceful vacation. On the highway with family and in the car, all of a sudden on the, on the highway, the, first ti uh, the front tire of the passenger side, it blew out. We come to ground, grounding halt, and for my great uh, surprise, I came to know I didn't know how to change the tires. Well, I never knew, and I still don't know. You teach me. 
So what do we do? We were helpless and called uh, AAA and waiting for some help. All of a sudden, a stranger passed by us and pulled to the side and came walking towards us and then say, hey guys, looks like you're in some trouble. <laughs> yeah, big trouble. So he helped us to get to change the tire. And uh, after the whole thing was over, I was uh, about to offer, I didn't know how to respond, uh, about to offer some um, cash and he, he refused to take and he said something I still remembers me. You know, you know what? Why I did this one? Because someday, if my wife is in the similar situation, someone might help her out. So we thanked him, we got into the car, as we were driving by, my, one of my daughters said, Papa, are there angels? I said, we just saw one. Sometimes strangers helping others, the, you know, in the kind way. Angels might visit us through strangers, when, especially when they are kind. In our study on uh, an excellent way of living, last week we talked about something. Can anyone remember what we talked about last, last week? Patience. Remember those kitchen appliances I brought to us? You know, how many of your internal uh, 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 crock pots were working last week? Right? Yeah, some of you were chuckling. Yeah, your internal crock pot. And that means I, I don't want to ask how many of your pressure cookers burst open last week. You know what I'm saying, right? A patient a crock pot, a pressure cooker is like personal impatience. So today we will look into uh, another element. Love is kind. After addressing various concerns and struggles and challenges of the Corinthian church, Apostle Paul showed them how to live a life filled with love. The, by the way, we're going to re station ourselves in 1 Corinthians 13 for a while. So don't get impatient with that. Right? Say, Pastor, come on, give me something new. Well, what did you do with what the information you heard yesterday? Why should I give you new? Well, I will give you. But let's be with this on for a while. By the end of our time together, probably you will know everything you should know about 1 Corinthians 13. Even in the middle of the night, if we wake you up, if I say, what is it, what is it all about? You will say, love. You pass the test. So he was talking about, uh, first three verses we looked at, he argued that the supremacy of love is much better. It is, uh, it, uh, love is better than knowledge or other accomplishments and uh, even giving and sacrifices and so on. Then he defined what the true biblical love is. Two words, action words. One is patient, love is patient, and love is kind. So let's look at what, the, what and why kindness is, what is the purpose and the power of kindness, and how we might become kind people. You think it's a good, good way to work our way around? about kindness. So what is kindness? Can anyone define what kindness is? Having a heart for the others, okay? What else? Being helpful, yep. Come on, I know there are a lot of kind people sitting over here. You do all those kind things, but what is it? Seeing the need and putting yourself to meet that need, like that man who saw the need and he said, okay, let me go and help. What else can be? Being friendly can be a kind, kind action, right? Being friendly. And uh, uh, that's what the bio dictionary says. It's kindness is the quality of being friendly, generous, and considerate. Kindness is a behavior marked by acts of generosity, um, consideration or concern for others without expecting praise or reward. It means caring, being selfless, and compassionate. Kindness is one of the 
key components, uh, the, the word that comes over and over again in the Bible. The Hebrew word hesed, which occurs more than 190 times in the five, first five books of the Bible. Talk about 190 times. Why that is? Because that is, God placed so much weight on that word. Chesed, kindness. What does it mean? It means uh, uh, simply kindness, but it is often translated as loving kindness. It means giving oneself, enti oneself entirely with love and compassion. So the other definitions that are used in the Bible for kindness or love, benevolence, goodwill, benefit, mercy, and, uh, and so on. So by biblical kindness is, is uh, an attitude of love that contains some actions. Actions, it's just not a concept, but it contains actions, acts of mercy and compassion. In the King James Version, uh, we see uh, uh, the word uh, loving kindness. You know, you heard of that? Loving kindness comes up, uh, which captures the, 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 the word's essential, uh, the whole meaning. And loving kindness is often attributed to God and how he moves towards his people with acts of kindness. So we don't normally use that to people loving kindness. But when we talk about God being loving kindness, it's attributed often to God. For example, in Genesis 19th chapter, if you read what was going on in that story, uh, God was going to punish Sodom and Gomorrah cities. Remember that story? And what happened? He sends three angels, or the Lord comes in the form of angels, or angels come, and uh, they wanted to rescue Lot. Because Lot was one righteous man in that, in that town. So before they, they, they uh, uh, destroyed the city, they wanted to take him out of the city. So Ro Lot responded to this unusual kindness this way. In Genesis 19, chapter verse 19. Now behold, your servant has found favor in your sight, and you have been and you have magnified your compassion, which you have shown me by saving my life. Uh, in, uh, in other versions, it says loving kindness uh, or, or a great compassion. Or uh, that, that would we see that uh, Paul, uh, Lord responding to God's kindness towards him. How about David? David was anointed as a king, very young, right? When he was a very... Uh, as a 17 year old God anointed him through Samuel to become king but then what happened he was on the run continuously because Saul was after him to kill him to capture him so he ran into the wilderness to escape this uh, this man who was after his life it says that he stayed in the wilderness for about 13 years amid stress and harsh living in the wilderness he learned to trust God. Oftentimes trials and troubles push us in the direction of trusting God. He learned there what it is to trust God in the wilderness. Sometimes I, I, it is okay. God would let us to go through a wilderness to teach us uh, how to trust him. There he realized God's love and kindness uh, are better than life. Out of desperation, David sang this song that many of us sing even today. In the 80s, it was very popular. We may try to sing it in Psalm 63, verses 3 to 4. This is what it says. Because of your loving kindness is better than life, my lips shall praise you. Thus, Ill, thus I will bless you while I live. I will lift up my hands in your name. It is okay to lift up your hands when you come to worship the Lord. He lifted up his hands in my name, he says, in your name. My soul shall be satisfied as with marrow and fatness, and my mouth shall praise you with joyful lips. So when you go through hard times and troubles, sing this song. This is one of the songs that I've learned as a young Christian when I uh, got saved when I was 18. Uh, this is called, Thy loving kindness is better than life. 
Some of you may have heard this chorus. Has anyone? All right, some of us who were, who were born uh, 100 years ago have heard that. Uh, you know, we learned that one as, a, as young Christians, thy loving kindness. Let me sing that for us. Thy loving kindness is better than life. Thy loving kindness is better than life. My lips shall praise thee, thus will I bless thee. Thy loving kindness is better than life. Sing with me. Thy loving kindness is better than life. Thy loving kindness is better than life. My lips shall praise thee, thus will I bless thee. Thy loving kindness is better than life. Sing that song. Every time you go through hardships and struggles, say, Thy loving kindness is better than life. My lips will praise thee. Thus will I sing. Lift up your, the name of the Lord. I tell you, when you praise the Lord, your problems seem to will vanish away from, the, from your face. At least for that moment, God, God will give you grace. Do you say amen for that? Praise will change your, your circumstances. That's what, that's what the, the, the Psalms is all about. Full of praise. Especially when you're going through hardships. Loving kindness. God is loving. God is kind. And he wanted us to be kind as well. That's what we're going to look at now. Why is kindness essential in the life of a Christian? Why is it so that we got to be spending on this today? Several scriptures in the Bible talk about God's love and kindness towards his people. We see that. For example, if you turn to Psalm 30, 136, the whole chapter talks about loving kindness. Uh, endure, uh, it endures forever. God's loving kindness endures forever. So in other words, whatever God does always is motivated by love. That is the basis of everything what God does. Out of love. Either if he, when he blesses us, out of love. When he corrects us, out of love. When he disciplines us, out of love. So that the love, because of his love for us, because of his kindness towards us. Well, God has not only... Do you think God only is kind to righteous people? What do you think? This is a tough question. Is only good to the good people? No. Is he, is he good to the bad people? Uh, of course. I'm one of them. <laughs> He's been good to me. How about you? If you think you are a good person, probably you're, you have, you're having some mistaken identity here. We all are bad. We all are rotten sinners. But by grace, we are saved. Do you say amen for that? That is an overwhelming amen. So if you think there is something good, there's nothing good lives in us. All our works of righteousness are like what? Filthy rags. Dirty laundry. But we put on the, his robe of righteousness. That's what makes us clean. So here... He's not only good to the good people, but also to the wicked as well. Luke 6, chapter verse 35 tells us, But love your enemies, do good, and land, hoping for nothing in return. And your reward will be great, and you will be sons of the Most High. For he, who's he? For God is what? Kind to the ungrateful, unthankful and evil. Amen? Because of his kindness towards the evil world, evil people in the world, the world is not disintegrated as yet. God is kind. So if God is kind to the evil, how about you and me? We'll say, no, 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 they must be, you know, bring down the brimstone from, hell, from heaven and just push them to hell. Sometimes we can have that sort of unhealthy attitudes 
towards people who might not be sharing the same values as you share or may not be walking the way that you walk, may not be believing the same God that you believe, may not be uh, 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 having Jesus as their Lord and Savior as you have. We can, be, we can have such uh, hostile attitudes. But God is patient. God is kind. Therefore, we are to be patient and we are to be kind. So for, he is kind to the unthankful and evil. So kindness matters to God. Therefore, it should matter to us. What else? Why? Kindness is essential. Kindness is essential in the life of a believer because it's not God desires for us to be kind. God, it's not that God wants us to be kind. It's not that God expects us to be kind. But actually, he commands us. It is a command from one of the commands that we see uh, among many in Ephesians 4th chapter. Let's see uh, what is um, it says here. Instead, be kind to each other, tender-hearted, forgiving one another, just as God through Christ has forgiven you. Ephesians 5, 1 to 2, imitate God. Therefore, in everything you do, because you are his dear children, live a life filled with love, following the example of Christ. So here, if you look at the, 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 the words there, is there any command that you see directly in English language? You don't see that. But if you read through the Greek, the words, the verbs there, when it says, be kind to each other, it is a command. God wants us, God commands us to be kind to one another. He commands us to imitate God. So this is just not something that you would like to because God expects us, but you ought. Amen? As you want to obey the Lord's commands is one of them. And again, how do you obey the Lord's commands? Not out of force, because out of love. That's what the word of God tells you. If you love me, you keep my commandments. So if you love God, you keep being kind because it is God who wants us to be kind. He commands us to be kind. Proverbs 11th chapter verse 17. Is there any reward in kindness? Being kind? Yes, there is. Your kindness will reward you, but your cruelty will destroy you. Think of that. If you're kind, you will be rewarded. But if you're cruel, if you're, a, if you're out there to hurt others, if that's your modus of operanda, with your words or with your deeds, with your uh, uh, actions or lack thereof, if your intention is to hurt others, that doesn't go well for you in the long run. It will destroy us. But if we are kind, we will be rewarded. Well, indeed, kindness makes others happy but it also lifts our spirits up. Amen? When I'm kind, you know, you feel good. There's a, a feel-good factor when you can do some kind work and be a, give a kind word uh, to somebody. Um, then that's what, something that we know. So there is a reward in that. So God has shown us. Now think about this. When last, last time when you've done something, a, a random kind of act, a random act of kindness, how did you feel? Did you feel good? Yes, I did. Many of you, you know, can feel good about that when you do something, something uh, kind to others. So in other words, God is showing us how to be happy and how to be healthy in life. Well, the world thinks that they discovered some magic formula for being happy and they go around and say being kind to people, it is scientifically proven. Well, of course, it is. It, God has put it out already there. So let's see how the science understands. If we can pull out a, a video that I'd like to uh, uh, show, show us. us. 
Sometimes it's easy to feel like the world's getting harder. But if we look closer, on the news, on the web, on the street, we're anything but unkind. Every day, we hear new stories of people trying to make the world a better place. And together, we can make the world that little bit kinder for all of us. It all starts with just one person, you. The thing about kindness is that it's just about the only thing in the world that doubles when you share it. And it's a fact, backed by science. Studies have shown that if you perform just one random act of kindness a day, you'll not only reduce your stress, anxiety, and depression, but your body is flooded with the same hormones that make you and the person you've helped calmer, healthier, and happier. Serotonin, which heals your wounds, helps you relax and makes you feel good. Endorphins, which reduce pain, and oxytocin, which reduces blood pressure and makes you feel more loving and loved. You'll both be more energized, feel less aches and pains, more confident, and could even live longer. And if other people see you helping someone else, they'll be filled with those same feel-good hormones, meaning they're significantly more likely to pay it forward. Like taking that extra moment to hold the elevator for someone, spotting a coffee for a stranger who's just a few cents short, giving your neighbor a hand with their groceries, even just smiling and meaning it. It doesn't take much, but it can make a huge difference for everyone. Those people you've helped will help other people, and those other people will help even more people. And those random acts of kindness can start a chain reaction that can spread across an entire community, a city, a country, and with enough of us, the world. Now, isn't that the world we all want? And it all starts with one. It'll do a lot of good to you and to others. So let's try to be kind uh, to to uh, others. Uh, I, I can I can certainly feel that you know when I when I shout at my cats and say shut up, and it doesn't shut up in the first place. It makes my blood pressure go even higher. But if I go down kindly, unkindly, I kindly go down and put some food, and then pats on him, he's quiet, and then. It does something. So just there is a way we can be learn to be kind. So how can Christians be kind? That's what we are we are trying to explore. We are called to be kind both in words and deeds. Yes, both, not only actions but words and deeds. Apostle Paul wrote to the persecuted Christians and God uh, uh, that God's divine power had given them everything they need to live live a godly life. Then he encouraged them to make every effort and supply, supply seven things. I preached on that, seven supplements to our faith uh, sometime back. Seven, supply seven things to their faith, and one of them was brotherly or affection or kindness. Uh, and then top it up with love. Of Second Peter first, first chapter, verses 5 to 8. If you look at that, you'll find out the word brotherly kindness, the, the, the Greek word there was uh, uh, Philadelphia, Philadelphia. The word Philadelphia uh, comes from two words uh, of uh, philos, philos, friend, adolphos, brother. Uh, so in NIV, it is translated as a mutual affection. So whenever I say brotherly kindness, don't forget it includes sisters as well. So let me say brotherly and sisterly kindness is the love that is expressed between the family members of God. What is the family members? That is the church, right? In other words, let's be kind to one another. That's what Christians do. At least they should. Now how is it manifested? How is brotherly kindness manifested? It is manifested through our words we speak and through the actions that we do. Kind acts. We all know what kind words can do to people. They are like, the Bible describes them as, they are like sweet honey, dripping, you know, dripping. Like, how many of you like honey? 
right? We, we just enjoyed that honey, uh, uh, you know, like uh, just uh, those are like, those are the kind words. In Proverbs 16, 24, it says, kind words are like honey, sweet to the soul, and healthy for the body. Mm. Can you do good to yourself? Be kind. Speak words of kindness. Kind words. We have the power in our tongue, don't we? With that power, either we can destroy somebody or we could build somebody up with our kind words. So watch out. Watch out. How, how are we using our tongues? Are we using them constructively or destructively? Well, we should not just limit our, wor- our kindness to words. In other words, say, be well. Everything will go well for you. I'm praying for you. I love you. Or just not in just words alone. But we got to go one step further in do it, showing that in actions. You know, we know that, right? Uh, um, love, uh, as I said, uh, uh, love, is, love is patient. Love is action, right? The same way kindness is just not in uh, uh, is a concept, but it is also action. So it has to be reflected more in actions than in words. First John, it says, dear children, let's not merely say that we love each other. Let us show the truth by our actions. Our actions will show that we belong to the truth. So we will be confident when we stand before God. So just not say, just go well. Everything will be okay. Everything will be well for you. But step up and do something in action. We are familiar with this phrase. Actions speak louder than words. Let's do it again. Actions speak louder than words. So let those actions be more uh, uh, visible and more pro- pronounced than just mere words. Words are necessary. Words are important. Kind words are important as well. But top them up with some action, loving action. Uh, so so that, that brings us to the third our, our last point today, we look at how do we grow in kindness? Pastor, tell us now, you, you la- labored all, the, all about kindness, but uh, can you tell us practically how do we grow? Thank you for asking me that question. Very overwhelming question that is. So let's, let's look at that, what that means. So here, how many of you think we were, when we, the, the moment we were born, we were born with tons of kindness in us? Has anybody born coming out with say, hello, here I am, I'm a kind person? No, right? That, it's not that how it works. It is more acquired thing. It is an acquired thing as we grow, as we understand. It is something to be taught, something to be learned, and something to be cultivated. It means keep working on it, being kind. It doesn't come out naturally. That's why... Uh, we have to be intentional in doing kind things or intentionally pull back when you are so quick to say something negative. We need to pull back and think about how can I say differently in a, a, in a kind way or how can I send a, a, a kind email, you know, just before saying go button quickly. Think of, we need to work on that effort intentionally. That's what Paul uh, uh, says, you know, uh, um, we have to make every effort to be kind. Uh, Peter talks about actually in Second Peter. Every effort, it takes effort. And Paul says, we have to put on kindness. That means uh, uh, kindness is somewhere as if it is out there. It's like a clothing as we put on. Uh, uh, we need to dress ourselves with kindness. So growing in kindness, how do we do that? It, first of all, it begins by recognizing that we are loved and we are, and God has been kind to us despite of how bad we were. Amen? Despite of our wickedness, God has been kind to me. God has been uh, loving towards me. That should give me enough reason to step out and uh, reciprocate or show that love to others, to animals or to people and all that we, we want to show forth because God has been kind and good to us. Well, where do we start this? Like everything starts 
with me. Remember, there's a, there's a man who said about, prayed about uh, God to send forth revival in the world. You know, there's a great prayer to pray. Send forth revival in the world. Right? We all pray for that. We pray that other people to be kind. Great. But then what he did, he drew a circle and he stepped into that circle and he said, Lord, send the revival here first. Amen? So same way, we, it must begin with me. In other words, it must start, I need to start applying that kindness towards me. I need to start being kind to myself. Some of us have a hard time to be kind to ourselves. Some of us have a hard, hard time to love ourselves. You know, we think so bad, you know, how could God forgive me? You know, how uh, uh, this is, uh, I badly blew it up, I blew it. You know, how do, uh, uh, how can I get this one? You know, we can't give ourselves that grace. We cannot forgive ourselves. So first, be kind to yourself. In other words, speak that, a uh, 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 gospel to yourself. What is that gospel? The gospel of God says, I am, I am beloved of God. I am dearly loved. I am forgiven. I am give, I'm given uh, 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 inheritance. You know, God is compassionate towards me. I'm his beloved child. All that first speak to yourselves. And then, where is the next place? Where is the next one? That is, being kind in your own home first. Take care of yourself and then take care of your home. So this is where I want to address. Husbands, how do you treat your wives? Are you gentle and kind towards them or are you harsh? Do you speak words of tenderness and loving and caring words to your, your, your wife? Or, or do you use cutting language and hurt them? Or do you help them out in the in the household chores or do you let your 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 wife just to take care of everything and uh, well, so it, uh, when I say the husbands I'm speaking to the wives as well it could be said of the wives as well at the same time so kindness must begin with ourselves first and at home and then it should come to the family of God and from there it would go out that's what we need to be uh, uh, learning uh, how to be kind. In our uh, emotionally healthy spirituality class, how many of you were there last Wednesday? You know, you were there. You learned about one uh, a very uh, important character. His name was Joseph. Remember Joseph? You know, I. You know, some of those of you not coming to the class, you are missing out. You got to. You got to make some some time, carve out some time, and come together and learn about these important principles. Here, Joseph had something. We learned about Joseph. What did we learn? Let me uh, uh, recapture, uh, um, summarize the life of Joseph. If you read from uh, Genesis 37 to 50, you will find out. As a young boy, he had got, he, he got dreams. Remember those dreams? And then he shared his dreams with his brothers. And then they were so upset about those those uh, dreams, and they were angry. And, uh, and it says something like this. They, have, they didn't know how to respond, but their response was out of anger. And this is what uh, uh, they, uh, they, they said, uh, it said about them. They had no kind words to say to Joseph. Brothers, they had no, not even one kind word to tell Say to your own brother, your own sibling, no, because they were so upset, and and then began to hate him, and they were je they were jealous, and in the end they sold him to Egypt as a slave, and when he was in the, in uh, Egypt, without he, uh, his fault, he was falsely accused, and then he was put in prison. Remember that, and he was in prison even after interpreting the dreams of the, the baker and the, the wine dresser, and they, they got the benefit of his dreams, but they totally forgot to tell, the, tell Pharaoh he was there uh, uh, falsely. And it says for two years, nobody knew. Everybody seemed to have abandoned him. But there's one person did not abandon him. That was God. God was with him. 
And all along, God was working in him. God was preparing him to bring him to be a place where he could be a blessing, not only to his family and to others. Now, this is the climax of this story. When all these brothers come before Joseph, remember in the 50th chapter, they're before him and he discloses uh, to the brothers uh, his true identity and all that. And this is how he, Joseph responded to his brother who were very nasty to him. They did all these bad things. But this is how he responded. Genesis 50th chapter, verses 9 to 19 to 21. Let's see if we have that. But Joseph replied, Don't be afraid of me. Am I God that I can punish you? You intended to harm me, but God intended it all for good. He brought me to this position so I could save the lives of many people. He said, no, do not be afraid. I will continue to take care of you and your children. So he reassured them by speaking kindly to them. How did Joseph get to that place where he could do these act acts of kindness? as well as speak words of kindness. Because he was emotionally and spiritually healthy. He knew that God loved him. He knew, he experienced the presence of God. And he received God's kindness. Now he's in a position to give it to others. Amen? So today, as we go out, I want us to be like Joseph. Be loving and be kind to one another. Would you stand up with me? As the Lord helps us by the power of his Holy Spirit, may the Lord purge our, our words. May the Lord cleanse our mouths. May the Lord cleanse our hearts, removing bitterness, rage, anger, malice, all that ugly stuff that is there in our hearts, we could remove that as we repent and ask the Lord to forgive us so that we could be full of grace, we could be full of love, we could be kind even to the unkind people. Our words will bring healing rather than hurting and dividing and, uh, and causing divisions. So may the Lord help us. So John, do you have a song for us to lead us? Oh, we do our final song. We, we ask for more together this week and this morning. We're also asked to celebrate together. And we get a, a wonderful celebration this morning of, of two people's birthday. And the first Amen. person is Onion and the other one is Nani, better known as <laughs> Anya and Naomi. So <laughs> it's nice to be that young. So uh, Onion and Nani, this is for you. So let's have a rousing uh, version of Happy Birthday. Amen. Happy birthday to you.
all the great things he has done. Hallelujah. God, we thank you. Lord, above all the great things, the greatest thing that you've done for us is that you have saved our souls. And we are so grateful for the great gift of salvation. Thank you for your love. God, that you have been patient with us, been kind towards us. So Lord, as we go out today, you would help us to, to radiate your patience through us to others and your kindness through us to others. In Jesus' precious name I pray, amen. The love of the Father, the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the fellowship of the Holy Spirit, to all those who are celebrating birthday today and to all of us will be with us forever and ever. Amen. God bless you all. We'll see you, God willing, on Wednesday.